Okay, welcome into this week in Penn State football. It's the Cotton Bowl edition. Penn State versus Memphis, ATT and ATT Stadium, excuse me, home of the Dallas Cowboys. And we're going to start with some news about Penn State's quarterback. <laughs> Okay, the Penn State Blitz podcast rolls on. Greg Pickle, I'm Bob Flounders. We just talked a lot, a lot about recruiting. Uh -huh. now, now it's time to talk about the Cotton Bowl, Penn State and Memphis. It's inching closer, and we're going to start with quarterback Sean Clifford and what they might call a little bit of a reveal. It looks like his injured status, he's healing quickly, and it looks like whatever was bothering, we think it was a lower leg injury or not positive, kept him out of the Rutgers game the second half of the Ohio State game. It looks like he might be okay to play. Yeah, so two things jump out at me as it relates to him moving into the postseason. One, they're going to let him talk at Bull Media Day in State College this week. Mm -hmm. Two, he said on the, the school's live stream that he can't wait for the first chance to play in and start a New Year's Six game. So that kind of tells you all you need to know. Now, we've heard quotes before, yeah. like Noah Kane's 90%. <laughs> they don't always mean uh, what we think they mean, but... The fact that James Franklin seemed to indicate after the Rutgers game that the treatment plan is what held Sean Clifford yeah. out, it seems like they could have done something to fix him in four days. Instead, they thought maybe you know a couple of weeks would be a better way to go about things. They knew they didn't need him to beat Rutgers. So, you know, I don't know if there was a lot of doubt about whether he would play in the Cotton Bowl, but there certainly seems to be less now than there's ever been ahead of this matchup with Memphis. Well, there still, mean, there still might be some doubt about if he's 100%. Sure. Because he could be 95%. Um, well, if he was 90%, he wouldn't play. So we know he's somewhere between 90 and 100 if he does. <laughs> um, but you just wonder. The reason it's important is because his movement was clearly affected mm -hmm. by this injury. I, it showed up late in the Minnesota loss. I thought it showed up in the Ohio State game, and they finally had to kind of pull him. Right. Uh, James Franklin said he could have he could have returned, but he just couldn't do enough. And Sean admitted that they they stuck with Will Levis. Will got the start against Rutgers. Did some okay things. Struggled, I think, to throw the ball. Um, but you know, the, the, I guess the bigger question is. Do they need a Sean Clifford at close to 100% to beat Memphis? Well, you know, my first thought about this Memphis game back when this announcement was made was that they were going to play for Ryan Silverfield, the, at that time, interim head coach yeah. of the team. Because you, if you looked at some of the social media stuff the Memphis players were putting out there when Mike Norville left for yeah. Florida State, mm -hmm. it was very clear that there were a lot of guys who wanted Ryan Silverfield to get this job. So it seemed like a tremendous motivational angle for the Tigers. Well, now he has the job. It's already his. They made him officially the new head coach earlier, uh, late last week. So that's out the window. I mean, will they need a, a fully healthy Sean Clifford? You know, you made a good point earlier in the, the Blitz podcast is that there were times they struggled to put points up um, with or without a healthy Sean yeah. Clifford. So. You know, but then again, Will Levis came in and scored more points on Ohio State than some other teams have this year, albeit with some short field. So Memphis will be motivated for this game. There's no doubt. I do think Penn State will be, too. I think one thing we're going to continue to hear between now and kickoff is how many of these guys were impacted by how that loss to Kentucky felt last year yeah. and what it was like to go from January until August with no chance of winning a game again. I think that's a huge uh, factor for this game for Penn State. We'll get into our picks next week, of course. I like them to win. I like them to cover. So uh, more on that later. But, I, you know, do they need them to be fully healthy? I think they need to be close to it. Yeah. Memphis won't just roll over. Yeah. But, um, you know, certainly they'll have a talent advantage in that game. I think two more things to touch on here. Uh, one more injury we need to talk about is Etor Gross Matos. This is yeah. going to be – he's he's, go he's going into the 2020 uh, NFL draft after his second consecutive – First team all Big Ten season, but he was definitely not healthy down the stretch for Penn State. Hurt in the Ohio State game, didn't play against Rutgers. I think he was in a sling. Yep. You just don't know, you know, he's, you know, the big picture is the draft. Um, what do we think about maybe him being ready to play or playing at all 
in this game. Yeah, I mean, the fact that his uh, NFL draft entry statement said that he was looking forward to suiting up one more time in the bowl indicates that he would like to play. Right. Now, whether the medical people and everyone else will advise him uh, <laughs> yeah. to do that is a completely different story. And I would expect that unless the sling was precautionary only, if it was precautionary only, yeah, I'll probably play. Yeah. Um, if there was something that has a procedure or something yeah. like that, you know, it's just – he has to ask himself, especially if a senior bowl invite might be called, you know, now that they invite juniors to that game now, he just has to ask himself, I mm. think, does he want to risk not being 100% for any avail, you know, any chance he might have to showcase his skills before the combine? So, you know, that's the question he'll have to ask himself. But it seems like if he's healthy, he wants to play. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of factors involved, too. Yeah, and Penn State's defensive line just isn't going to be the same Correct. Uh, without him. Great player at Penn State for the last two years. Potential first-round pick in the 2020 draft. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we haven't seen the last of Etor Gross Matos. Hopefully, he's going to suit up uh, against the Memphis Tigers. I got that nickname right. Uh, one final thing, just a note. Uh, Penn State AD Sandy Barber uh, kind of offered her first real yeah. uh, comments on the decision to extend James Franklin through the 2025 season. The details were still kind of searching we'll for We'll get him eventually. But we think it's going to be more, obviously more money for James, probably more money for the assistant, co uh, yeah. assistant, co assistant coaches, facility upgrades, all that good stuff. But she kind of issued a statement about why it was important to yeah. keep James long term. Yeah, she was talking on their signing day stream and said, look, we think he prioritizes the right things, that there's not anybody better to lead this football program. And how do you, I mean, I think you'd be hard pressed. Even the most, uh, you know, the staunch, uh, uh, people that don't like James Franklin or the way he coaches or his in-game decisions. I think if you really took a step back and right. thought about it, you would be hard pressed to right. find somebody who checks as many boxes as you need to check to run a college football program in 2019 as James Franklin does. And if you need any evidence of it, just watch the way he interacts with the recruits that sign. And you know, those interactions continue once those kids get to campus. So yeah, we'll find out his terms eventually, but you know, she said what you would expect her to say. Mm -hmm. And again, as we've talked about before, I do think we'll learn more about what he got in the extension, mm -hmm. not by looking at the basic term sheet, which will tell us his salary, but probably not all the details they agreed to. I think we'll learn more about that once we see what kind of offensive coordinator right. they get. That's right. And the indication, because they won't probably release that guy's salary. But of course not. The the level of candidate they get will probably tell you all you need to know about what kind of assurances or additional opportunities that extension afforded him. Literally afforded him.